Well, thank you very much for this opportunity to present this um, paper, um, which um, uh, I have the um, pleasure of talking with uh, uh, Shiga-san. I am Japanese, and um, but spent most of my uh, uh, well, I had most of my life in uh, education in uh, abroad, uh, abroad, and therefore. Uh, did, do not have very good knowledge of uh, Japanese uh, uh, policies, and this is a wonderful opportunity to um, uh, uh, to learn more about it. How do you? Uh, oh, I see, just there. So um, this uh, this paper, this uh, this research project, um, uh, as uh, Mr. Kinnan uh, mentioned, uh, is was uh, conducted in. Um, the context of this changing landscape of development cooperation, and there's an, a great deal of uh, discussion internationally about uh, the challenges that South South Cooperation um, <coughs> is uh, posing to, uh, uh, to to traditional donors, and much of the debate I think is in the terms of the conventional. Uh, realist political science analysis that looks at aid as a kind of a strategic uh, instrument of countries to pursue political interests or economic financial interests. Um, it is also <coughs> evaluated in terms of um, conventional economic research context of uh, looking at aid as a resource, an economic and financial resource, or a resource in terms of uh, know-how and knowledge. Um, so um, there is, as um, Mr. Kahn also mentioned, there's very little attention actually given to the role of ideas and relationships that are created between the donor and the recipient. So much of the literature on development aid does not look at uh, this question of the relationship between the donor and the recipient that is created and uh, the role that ideas, uh, that is norms, can play in uh, defining uh, policies. And um, the main uh, reason why we did this is also because it has always been said that Japanese aid model is different, somehow distinct from the DAC model. Um, and Japanese uh, policy statements always have a section called philosophy, but somehow no one seems to pay much attention to this. It, it has much, not much consequence in terms of the way that uh, DAC, uh, for example, the DAC dis discusses um, uh, policies. So, um, so this 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 paper uh, looks at. Um, the role of norms in uh, Japanese development systems. What we use is, uh, we're, we're looking at it um, not from this um, realist or um, material neoliberal system of development cooperation, but we take a social science perspective in, in our analysis. Um, and um, of course it draws on um, the constructivist um, tradition in international relations scholarship. Uh, um, the, um, <clears throat> we draw on, um, uh, so, so norms are ideas and they, um, I go back. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes, okay, so, um. So no, what are norms? No, no, norms are basically ideas. They are um, <coughs> they include um, uh, institutionalized rules like uh, GATT guidelines, uh, but they also uh, include um, um, informal rules of behavior. Um, they're embedded in uh, discourses about uh, what is virtuous, and they are, are accepted uh, practices. Um, uh, and uh, thought of as kind of common sense. Uh, norms are important in aid model, models because they guide 
policy priorities instruments and relationships uh, with recipients. Um, <coughs> and, and norms in something like uh, development aid is also important <coughs> because uh, so much of it is um, uh, what happens what happens through informal uh, understanding of, uh, uh, of, of the rules rather than um, uh, formal rules. And I think enough, a lot of uh, a behavior uh, can be explained not by you know, thinking about norms as a sort of a rule of law, but by looking at it as these kind of soft, uh, uh, informal uh, ideas that are accepted. Um, we are using this concept of gift theory uh, in anthropology to make our <coughs> of norms. Now, gift theory, gift theory is a theory in anthropology uh, based on the works of Marcel Mauss uh, that basically asserts, argues, that um, there is never a gift that is free. That even if uh, you do not expect monetary <coughs> compensation for offering something, that there is always a relationship that is created an expectation of a return gift of some kind. Uh, gifts, the, the, the giving of gifts, uh, also has all kinds of implications in, in establishing a social relationship between the giver and the recipient. Um, it re creates a relationship of hierarchy and power. That the person who gives a gift is establishing a power relationship of superior superiority to the person who is receiving it. And the only way that that relationship is neutralized is if the recipient gives back, reciprocates with a return gift or some other um, some other gesture. Um, so this goes outside the domain of cons you know traditional thinking about uh, uh, aid as a kind of an economic transaction. Uh, this is an economic transaction in a well economic transaction in a normal commercial sense. Uh, this is an economic transaction understood within a social context in which you look at the the power hierarchy and the social relationship that is created by the by the gift, and of course, aid is a gift, right? Uh, development is aid is a form of a gift, and so we can try to understand uh, the behavior of uh, bilateral aid, in fact, and uh, the kind of um, uh, power hierarchies that are created by bilateral aid by resorting to these <coughs> concepts of. Uh, uh, of gift theory. <clears throat> and in fact, um, a, a number of uh, authors have um, written some very interesting papers uh, looking um, at development aid through this perspective of gift theory. Um, I would refer you to Mr. Dillon, who wrote um, a, a paper on um, analyzing um, uh, martial aid uh, from, the, from the United States to Europe according to this, this gift theory. Uh, Emma Morsley writing about uh, South-South Corporation uses it. Um, uh, Tom Hattori, who is also a Japanese uh, scholar living in New York City at, at CUNY, is, uh, has uh, written very theoretical papers on, um, on the topic. Uh, there are other papers as well. Um, and um, what is apparent in this literature is that the absence of institutionalized means of repayment is a core problem in the relationship between donor and recipient. And, and I think this question of the, 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 the relationship between donor and recipient is something that people in the world of development aid are acutely aware of. I myself uh, worked in UNDP for many years, and I worked in Africa in the uh, Regional Bureau for Africa and uh, in the field. And there was always this distinct and acute awareness of uh, a certain discomfort that, that the recipient countries feel with 
this system of aid. But they do not like being uh, objects of charity. Uh, that they feel belittled by by this relationship. They don't. They find it uncomfortable that they have to somehow uh, uh, depend on, on on donors. So, so this is a a kind of a, a thorn in the side of uh, developing countries. And and I worked for many many years uh, on um, in the uh, in West Africa. Uh, where the countries are mostly the least developed countries, where 95% of capital investment budgets are financed by external donors. So they are really highly dependent on, on this, this aid relationship. And um, uh, when you get to know uh, people um, in, in these governments, and I think one of the things about working in UNDP is that it's a kind of a, uh, a you establish a good relationship with, uh, with the uh, countries uh, with, with the recipient countries, and you know, you, you become friends with them, and and I, I think that you begin to understand better how they are, how they feel, and how they are how they are thinking. And so, uh, and in of course, in the DAC literature, uh, this relationship is called ownership, and how you know uh, recipients must own these principles. And this is one of the sort of central uh, dilemmas of uh, of DAC A. Uh, this challenge of ensuring that the recipient country actually owns the same, that the conditions that they wish to impose. <coughs> so um, this paper is using gift uh, theory to understand the nature of uh, reciprocity that is demanded in the form of a regimes, the nature of hierarchy that creates the relationship between donor and recipient, and, and, and therefore to give insights into the problem of ownership that exists in a relationships. <coughs> um, so um, now um, the, um, the the point about DAC norms, uh, the, the DAC, um, as you as you know, it is a membership group of um, the major donors now numbering some something between twenty and thirty. It keeps on growing. Uh, but their main purpose is actually to establish consensus norms. And uh, even though the DAC members are quite diverse and uh, they do actually manage to come around to agree on certain uh, <coughs> common principles. Um, and so in, uh, in, in, in recent years, uh, they have increasingly uh, come to the consensus of uh, ending poverty as the overriding objective. I'm very sorry, I, this is not very legible. This is the PowerPoint. And there's an emphasis on um, uh, on grant aid for LDCs, and there are, there is priority for uh, social investment, uh, market market liberalization, and democratic governance. Um, and their basic principle uh, that guides the evaluation of uh, their programs is aid effectiveness. <clears throat> and the donor-recipient relationship that is created is supposed to be one of partnership and mutual uh, accountability uh, in which um, there is um, conditionality. And there is demand for the recipient to own the, uh, the, uh, the uh, it's a partnership, but they're they're expecting the recipient to own the, the policy uh, uh, principle. Um, and with respect to reciprocity, the obligation to respect repay is basically suspended because uh, the DAC norm is to provide grants, and the driving uh, purpose. Is, uh, is charity to the less fortunate. Um, now, so this is the sort of the framework of DAC, DAC uh, norms in, with respect to development cooperation objectives and instruments and priorities. Now, what is important is to understand that framing actually then excludes certain other ideas. And so what is excluded under this, this framework is the idea of economic development, uh, 
mean, I'm talking about, this is curious because over the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, uh, economic development was the objective, but, you know, that norms today under underemphasize economic development and they emphasize ending poverty. Uh, and uh, they also then, um, um, they also don't talk about reciprocity. They don't, there's no mention of what, what is expected in return uh, from this gift because it's supposed to be a, a grant. And, um, <coughs> and economic and, and, and program priorities such as economic infrastructure, national capacity, leadership, those things are uh, out of this framework. Uh, and uh, when uh, the concern for aid evaluation is aid effectiveness as opposed to development effectiveness. Um, and uh, the donor-recipient relationship with the basis uh, of mutual accountability and ownership, um, what is out of the framework is our issues of sovereignty, national sovereignty of the recipient and self-reliance. Um, and um, uh, uh, the, um, uh, the, the, the driving motivation is essentially the charity, it is essentially charity for the less fortunate, um, meaning that what is out of the framework are these concepts of um, mutual uh, benefit, uh, political agendas, uh, and economic agendas of the, of the donor. So, um, what I'm trying to point out is that in fact, um, the that norms actually define uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in um, aid as charity, uh, and 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 actually leaves out of this framework many of the core principles that are important in. Uh, Japanese uh, bilateral aid policy. And that is also, um, uh, that is also important in southern cooperation models. Now, what are some southern cooperation models? Southern, there, there's no single southern cooperation model, unlike uh, the DAC donors, um, developing countries that have become donors have not formed an organization similar to that, and they have very many diverse models. However, there are certain things that are clearly emphasized by several uh, leading southern donors in South-South Cooperation uh, that are very distinct and, and out of the framework of uh, that norms. Um, and I should say that the, this issue of framework, you know, the framing, uh, is, is very interesting. It's a, it's a device, it's a mechanism that is used uh, by um, important players in international uh, debates to dominate discussions. The way that you dominate <coughs> policy debates in international fora is to uh, make sure that the framework is one that is compatible with your objectives and to make the things that are out of the framework kind of uh, appear to be unthinkable. Um, so, southern cooperation models uh, emphasize things that are out of the framework of uh, DAC models. So, the objective is economic transformation and growth. I mean, this is the traditional southern agenda um, <coughs> for, for development. Um, and they use diverse instruments, including grants, but also loans, voucher arrangements, all kinds of other incentives. Uh, they have diverse priorities, but clearly they emphasize infrastructure development uh, and uh, common regional economic opportunities. And there are many of these donors are concerned with uh, <coughs> mutual benefit, aid effectiveness, development uh, uh, effectiveness. Uh, these are not things that are so so um, so emphasized. Southern um, uh, donors' evaluation. But mutual F benefit is something that is much more uh, emphasized. And, uh, the, but I think that is uh, very uh, clear in much of the literature of the Southern uh, donors and South South Cooperation is the uh, donor recipient relationship. That the, um, that there is respect for sovereignty, equal partnership, 
um, and uh, solidarity. Uh, that the rationale, the motivation for South-South cooperation is actually um, a cooperation with um, uh, countries, uh, what with solidarity with countries that share a common history and a political um, position, I suppose. Uh, and um, the, the, the discourse emphasizes economic cooperation for mutual benefit as the, as the purpose. And um, what I think is also important to note is that the underlying theory of development here is that there are diverse pathways to development. Whereas the, the claim of DAC aid is that there is a single answer. There's a technocratic claim that there is the right way to develop, that there are technocratic answers to the challenge of development. And organizations, you know, like the World Bank, the IMF, essentially build their, uh, their you know, on death on this idea that they have the knowledge based on uh, superior, uh, <coughs> superior knowledge and, and uh, technology uh, that can be conveyed to the benefit of development. Um, now, uh, so when we compare these discourses, yeah, uh, you see this, this contrast, you know, Maudsley in her 2012 book um, has compared these two um, discourses. Uh, I, should play, I should clarify that when I talked about these Southern and DAC norms, you know, they're not what, what, uh, what these donors do necessarily, it's what they claim. So their, their discourses, uh, you you see this kind of contrast between charity as the basic objective versus uh, opportunity uh, for the southern donors, sympathy, <coughs> the, the view of the recipient uh, being sympathy for those pe people out there for the DAC donors, but uh, for the southern donors, empathy based on shared identity. Uh, and the moral obligation is moral obligation to the unfortunate for the DAC donors, solidarity with third world countries for the southern donors, uh, and with respect to uh, uh, reciprocity, the suspended reciprocity, and uh, where it, for the DAC donors, where there is the emphasis on mutual uh, benefit and recognition of reciprocity for the southern donors. Um, so there are these contrasts now. Um, and I think the point about Japan is that um, you might think that the Japanese thinking and philosophy uh, looks more similar to Southern donors on some of these, uh, maybe not all, but on some of these points. <coughs> and this is, the, this is what actually gave rise to, uh, to our research, this observation that the norms of uh, Japanese aid uh, have quite a lot in common with the uh, southern, southern donors. So, um, <clears throat> the, um, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the interesting thing about this comparison in uh, terms of um, current debates about uh, aid in international circles is that uh, is the way that uh, both southern donors and uh, Japan are actually criticized uh, by <coughs> international standards. Um, that uh, the controversies over South South cooperation, I mean, the rise of South South cooperation actually generated an enormous amount of um, debate uh, amongst the major donor countries. I think to some extent there was this uh, a kind of fear uh, of competition uh, and then there was a great deal of criticism uh, of South-South cooperation. Um, <coughs> in the same way, uh, the uh, Western countries have also been very critical over the, the decades and years of um, uh, Japan's ODA and uh, in the uh, DAC uh, 
uh, peer reviews of Japanese aid, for example, there has been quite a lot of uh, criticism. And in fact, some of these uh, same criticisms are leveled uh, today at South South Corporation as had been uh, leveled at uh, Japan. Um, so there is this, um, uh, this criticism that, that there is so much emphasis on infrastructure. Uh, I think that um, maybe this view is uh, kind of getting moderated these days. Um, but uh, infrastructure was obviously a core priority for both Japan and, and for Southern Corporation. Uh, and it's something that had been neglected by DAC donors in the era of the, uh, the MDGs and the emphasis on um, social investments. <coughs> uh, uh, economic cooperation is something uh, that uh, uh, southern donors are, are accused of. Uh, it's also been uh, the criticism level that uh, it has. Um, adding to unsustainable debt burden, that is also something that appears in debt donor views of uh, of Japan, and uh, that is uh, the commentary of many uh, DAC donors on South South Corporation. Uh, that the demand for uh, repayment, that is the demand for reciprocity, uh, is, is irresponsible uh, in, uh, in development cooperation to LDCs because uh, LDCs have uh, very low capacity for um, adding to their debt burden. Um, there is this concern with disregard for environmental and human rights standards um, <coughs> on the part of South South Corporation, and Japan is seen to be uh, soft on conditionality amongst uh, the DAC donors, even though Japan certainly subscribes to many of the conditionality uh, elements of um, uh, of, of its program, um, when it, there is co-financing with the World Bank and so forth, but in the spectrum <coughs> of, uh, of, of conditionality, uh, Japan is very uh, reticent to impose too much conditionality. And the support for rogue states, uh, here again, uh, Japan is not a hardliner on um, aid sanctions on um, countries uh, that are either rogue, considered to be rogue states, or uh, whose um, activities and uh, postures seem to be in contradiction with uh, democracy and human rights standards. Cases of uh, Myanmar uh, come to mind. Uh, some countries withdrew, for example, from Kenya. Uh, Japan did not, and, and, and so forth. <clears throat> so all of these issues where there is, I think, a contradiction between South-South norms and uh, uh, that norms are also reflected in the tensions over Japanese aid. Um, and, and here again, um, I think the issue of reciprocity is a good uh, way of understanding why Japanese aid uh, follows these, um, uh, these practices and these policies. Uh, that, um, in fact, in terms of gift, there is much more awareness of gift as this, this reciprocal relationship that requires reciprocity. Um, and uh, as I had mentioned in the introductory um, um, <coughs> commentary, uh, the, 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 the problem of the um, uh, suspension of uh, reciprocity creates, in fact, a difficult relationship with the recipient. Um, and I think that when you do an analysis of the way that uh, DAC norms are expressed, um, <clears throat> it is very much expressed in terms of, um, uh, of, uh, of a gift that creates this hierarchy uh, uh, by suspending um, spending reciprocity, uh, that uh, the, the, the relationship between the donor and the recipient is seen as one of a binary opposite between the wealthy uh, against the underprivileged, between the expert and the novice, the kind and the needy, uh, self-sufficient and the self-supporting. Um, 
and um, um, the um, and so some uh, some uh, some scholars have uh, characterized aid as a you know as a form of symbolic domination. Um, and I think these ways in which we can uh, understand, um, we can characterize uh, aid regimes by uh, these, these relationships uh, of um, reciprocity, I think, can give insights into why they are so, so different. Uh, whereas a conventional political science analysis would say, well, it is merely the South South Corporation or Japanese Corporation is pursuing um, um, national economic and political interests. <coughs> and the norm of aid as economic cooperation for mutual um, benefit um, uh, uh, provides a way of um, um, uh, developing um, and new informal ways of uh, economic cooperation, such as the Trinity approach, um, <coughs> development effectiveness of infrastructure investment, uh, and best practices for investment in natural resources and education. So um, I think these are some of the ways in which um, uh, we can actually try to think of the ways sort of valuable different ways in which Japanese uh, development cooperation has been effective. Um, now, I think some of this experience of Japanese uh, development today is particularly relevant in current uh, uh, dialogue, international debates about uh, the concept of aid. I mean, I, the, the aid paradigm <coughs> in the DAC is undergoing um, kind of a, a challenge. Um, the charity model is being questioned. Um, there is a, an attempt to redefine aid within the, within the DAC. And a major part of that is trying to understand the relationship between um, uh, public official assistance and private um, private uh, capital flows and private uh, uh, private sector cooperation. And, and in fact, the relation of the experience of Japan with, uh, uh, with approaches such as the Trinity approach and so forth is actually uh, quite interesting because it, uh, it was um, in Southeast Asia a rather a unique approach to dispensing with a uh, development cooperation that uh, looked at the relationship between uh, official finance for uh, public investment in infrastructure and human resources uh, as a complement to uh, public, uh, sorry, private investment uh, uh, in, um, uh, in private uh, in industry and then uh, the trade relationships that uh, came out of it. So, um, um, and I, and I think the final commentary that I would make is that, you know, Japan therefore has an opportunity to contribute to the redefining of DAC norms on development aid. Uh, but this kind of goes against the traditional role that uh, J uh, Japan has played in the international community. This uh, aid, uh, in, the, in the case of bilateral aid, uh, Japan has been a norm speaker that you have the DAC norms and uh, you Japanese uh, uh, delegation in the DAC is of course an important uh, participant in the debates but at the end of the day when you look at the evolution of the DAC norms uh, it was dominated by uh, actors other than Japan <laughs> and, uh, and this is the reason why ja Japanese aid was subject to so much criticism within the DAC. Um, and uh, Japan actually sort of adapted its rules to conform to the, uh, the DAC norms. So, I mean, there's always a kind of a give and take. There is a revision of, uh, of course, national norms uh, and rules uh, to adapt to international standards. 
but um, I think in a sense that there has been much less contribution that Japan has made to the formulation of that norms uh, than uh, there could have been, given the important role, the financial role that Japan has played, played uh, in the international um, community. So, I mean, there is this silent revolution that is taking place in development assistance regimes, um, and while emerging economies are quietly beginning to change the, the rules of the game, uh, I think it's very important for uh, Japan to think about what its norms are and how um, Japan might play a role in contributing to this shifting of uh, the rules of the game in the international aid. Thank you.